The other great Taoist figure of early China is Lao Tzu. Um, the person may have antedated Confucius. The book is the way and its power, the Tao Te Ching, is one of the most translated books in the world. It begins with a very famous line. Dao ke dao, fei chang dao, ming ke ming, fei chang ming. The way that can be spoken of is not the constant way. The name that can be named is not the constant name. The, the, point, the point of that is that if something is universal and all-inclusive, to define it as anything, to name it as something, is in fact to reduce it, to deny its inclusiveness. Now, it's a book about the way and its power, the Tao Te Ching, but it talks about the Tao a whole lot. So how can you, how can you say that the, 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 the way that can be spoken of, the Tao that can be spoken of, is not the constant Tao if you're going to spend a lot of your time talking about the Tao? What he can talk about is not a definition so much of the Tao, but talk, he can talk about how the Tao works. And in this book we find repeated models for how nature itself works. Nature works through reversal. It works through cycles. Something begins from nothing, becomes existent, and then disappears back into nothingness. And there's a, a sort of a mystical point here of unity with, with the Tao, unifer, uni, unity with this universal process that one should stay in the dark, stay low, not get out in front, keep in retreat, so to speak. Lao Tzu also has advice for the ruler. And it's interesting advice and somewhat unsettling. Zhuang Tzu, I guess, looks at the ruler and sort of, to the extent he's interested in rulers, he basically says, you should drop out too. He's not interested in, in telling them how to rule. But Lao Tzu is. And at the core of Lao Tzu's advice, advice to the ruler is, if you want to rule successfully, keep your people stupid. Keep your people dumb. Make sure that life is it's sufficient, their livelihood is sufficient. Don't encourage them to want to acquire. Keeping people ignorant and simple makes them easy to satisfy. But there is another message in, in Lao Tzu which is very important and enduring, and that's the idea of non-action, of wu wei, of not interfering, not trying to make things be some way, of not forcing the world to be as you want it, of, again, letting things be, of non-action. Do not seek wealth and power for certain. The short end of the stick is less likely to break than the long end of the stick. The taller they are, the harder they fall. Right? The softness can contain a blow. Hardness is brittle and breaks when hit. Always take the dark side, the quiet side, the soft side, the short side. Don't seek, don't strive. Stay out of harm's way. Don't try to accumulate, don't try to acquire, and you won't have anything to lose. The room that is empty can contain everything. The hub at the spoke of the wheel, at the center of the wheel, is what makes it possible for the wheel to work. It's empty too. But there's also, I think, in, in, in this, a turn away from the idea of cumulative learning. We think back to the Confucians like, Mencius with his idea of constant cultivation, of Shunzi with his interest in cumulative knowledge, that for the Taoists, unlearning is better than learning. Lao Tzu at one point, or the Tao Te Ching at one point says, you know, the only reason why you have humaneness and righteous, righteousness is because people have lost the way. If people truly lived according to the way, you wouldn't need ritual, you wouldn't need humaneness. He says, the uh, phrase right then from the Lao Tzu, be like a newborn babe. It doesn't build the world, it doesn't try to control the world, doesn't aim to do good for or to other people. But what it does do, I think, with this whole notion of dropping out is saying there's a way to survive. If you don't compete, if you don't get involved, at least you can survive and you can be happy in your own life.